hi friends <coughs> i welcome you to a video on introduction to a basic problem on bill of exchange in our earlier videos we have discussed what is a bill of exchange and the parties which are involved in a bill of exchange etc <coughs> now we will learn how to do accounting for a bill of exchange in this particular video i have given you a small illustration here to understand the accounting Mr. A sells goods on credit to Mr. B rupees fifty thousand on first April two thousand twenty one. So you can see a transaction which is happening here. Mr. A is selling goods on credit to Mr. B. The value of the goods is fifty thousand on first April two thousand twenty one. So we can see that there are two parties here. We will see the accounting in the books of both the parties. This portion I will use for recording. the entries in the books of mr a and here in the books of mr b so i'll just write here books of mr a and books of mr b here so what are the entries we are going to pass for this particular concept called as bill of exchange we'll learn mr a is selling some goods on credit to mr b the value of the goods is 50000 on 1st april 21 so on 1st april 21 what is the entry we are going to pass in the books of mr a we are going to pass the entry mr b account debtor rupees 50000 to sales account so what is the logic i have followed here mr b is a personal account receiver of the goods debit he owes money to mr a that is why he has been shown as a debtor sales is income for the business nominal account incomes and gains credit what is the entry we are going to write in the books of mr b 1st april 21 the entry we are he is receiving some goods so we'll pass the entry purchases account debit to mr a account because a is the person who has given the goods on credit to him Fifty thousand. What's the logic? Purchases. If I treat it as stock, I will say it as real account coming in. Hence debit. Mr. A is the supplier. He is personal account. He is giving goods on credit to the business. We owe money to him. That is why we have to show him as a creditor in our books of account. So this is the entry which Mr. A is going to pass in his books, and this is the entry which Mr. B is going to pass in the books of Mr. A. Mr. B is shown as a debtor because he owes money to Mr. A. In the books of Mr. B, Mr. A is shown as a creditor because Mr. B owes money to Mr. A. So this position of debtor creditor. is created due to the transaction relating to sale of goods on credit by mr a to mr b now let us suppose mr b is asking mr a or requesting mr a to give him 3 months time to make the payment the question arises what is the chance or why mr a should allow mr b 3 months time to make the payment so let us see our illustration here because mr b has requested mr a to give him 3 months time what happens here is mr a draws a bill of exchange on mr b for a period of 3 months mr b accepts and returns the bill to mr a so now what happens is when mr b requested mr a to give him 3 months time mr a takes a paper he writes the date 1st april 21 hyderabad writes the date he writes he writes here pay to order of mr a he writes his name rupees 50000 3 months from the date three months from the date he puts his signature here mr a he puts his signature here he puts a revenue stamp here and sends this bill he sends this bill to mr b 
Now what Mr. B does is he will write the words accepted on this bill and he will put his signature here Mr. B. He will sign here. So by doing this what happens is this normal paper becomes a valuable legal document called as a bill of exchange. Now Mr. B after signing on the bill after accepting the bill he cannot keep the bill of exchange with himself he has to give it to Mr. A because Mr. A needs a proof that Mr. B has promised to make him a payment of 50,000 after three months. If he doesn't make the payment then he is going to enforce this bill in court of law. Okay. So what Mr. B does is he signs the bill and he returns it to Mr. A. So what is the entry Mr. A is going to write on 1st April 21 the same day when A receives bill. Now A is receiving a valuable legal document an asset called as a bill of exchange. A will write the entry bills receivable account debit 50,000 who gave this asset to him Mr. B has given this asset to him hence Mr. B account will be credited with 50,000 what is the logic we are following bills receivable B by R I'm using a shortcut short or a abbreviation for bills of exchange bills receivable B by R here means bills receivable we are treating it as a real account asset it is coming into the business hence it is debited okay then who is giving this asset to him mr b he is a personal account he is the giver of this asset to us hence credit now what is happening because of this entry because of this entry mr b was earlier in, uh, earlier appearing as a debtor now his account is credited and his account is settled but without paying money his account has got settled but in place of cash we have an asset called as bills of exchange bills receivable okay which has a value of 50,000 as per law now on 1st April what is the entry Mr. B is going to write he is giving a bill to Mr. A Mr. A is receiving a bill from him hence Mr. A account will be debited Mr. A personal account receiver of the bill debit on this bill Mr. B has to make a payment so he will write bills payable same bill he will describe it as bills payable in his books 50,000 account should be credited what is the entry what is the logic behind the entry Mr. A personal account receiver hence debit bills payable again it is a liability it's a personal account liability because he has to make a payment on this bill credit or you can simply say bill of exchange real account going out credit also but this is a bill on which Mr. A has to make the payment hence we are going to write it as bills payable or you can simply write bills real account goes out hence credit so this is the entry Mr. B passes in his books of account now what happens after three months if you see returns the bill on the due date Mr. B honors the bill now what is the due date we will arrive at the due date the due date of the bill is 4th July 21 it is 1st April 21 plus 3 months time will be 4th April 21 plus 3 days of grace it will be 7th April 21 so this is how I arrive at the due date so 1st April I allowed 3 months time so it became okay I think I made a mistake here it became 1st April became 1st July 21 and we have allowed 3 days grace of 3 days of grace so it becomes 7th April 2021 I will just write the proper the correct one here first April 21 was the date of drawing of the bill plus three months duration 
the due date becomes 1st July 21 plus 3 days of grace. It becomes 4th July 21. On 4th July 21, Mr. B is honoring the bill. That means what Mr. B is going to do is, Mr. B will approach Mr. A and he will say, please give the bill back to me and take your money. Because he knows if he doesn't honor the bill, Mr. A can approach the court and ask the court to direct Mr. B to make the payment to him because it's a valuable legal document which is enforceable at law. So on 4th July, what Mr. A is going to do? A is going to get cash. If he gets a check, he will write bank account. Cash account, debit, 50,000. He will give the bill back to Mr. B. Two bills receivable. He will give the bill back. The bill is going out of his books of account. So what is the logic? Cash, real account, comes in hence debit the bills receivable its real account now goes out hence credit so he has received cash and he has given the bill what is the entry mr b is going to write he is going to get his bill back this bill he called as bills payable hence i will use the word b by p b by p here means bills payable so bills payable i am getting back so i will debit it in exchange, I am paying cash. That is why it is credited. What is the logic? Bills. I will call it as bills payable. But bill is a bill. Bill, real account, coming in, debit, cash, real account, goes out, credit. Or alternatively, what you can say is, here, alternatively, the logic we can give is bills payable it is extinguished by debiting it earlier when we accepted the bill we created a liability in our books when we have honored the bill we have to extinguish the liability the liability can be made zero only by debiting it personal account receiver debit so when we accepted the liability we credited it when we have discharged the liability we have to debit it and close it or you can simply say bills real account coming in debit both the logics will give you the same answer so this is how the bill of exchange will be accounted in the books of both mr a and mr b in their books of accounts in our next videos we'll take up some more examples of bills of exchange transactions thank you